You have tight hips, you stretch them. You stretch them, the hips still feel tight. So if you find that no matter what you're doing, that your hips always feel tight, well then this is the class for you because we have some lovely, functional, fabulous movements that are going to be exactly what your hips need and what you might not have been giving them in your more classical stretches, like lunges that you do. I'm Bree Johnson of Heart Bones Yoga and Heart Bones Yoga is here to help you feel better in your body and give you the tools so that you can maintain that good feeling and good movement and mobility that you can apply to your everyday life, your yoga practice, and everything else. So hit subscribe, follow, like, do all that stuff, and then let's get into this little class. When you stretch and your hips still feel tight, that's probably because you're doing classical stretches. And there's a place for them, especially, you know, I love lunges. If you ever do classes with me online, I do a lot of lunges because I love them so much. But there's ways to move that we overlook sometimes in our hip stretchiness. So I'm gonna show you one movement three different ways. And each of these ways is gonna offer a new supportive way of moving for your hip joints and your psoas muscles. So let's get it right into it. And the best part of it is the first one you get to lie down. So let's move and learn together. <sighs> All right, now I invite you to be on your back with your feet on the floor and the knees bent. Now, the first place to think about and to support our tight hips is the nervous system. Our nervous system is connected to a feeling of tension in the body and what you might relate as tight hips. So let's first offer a little bit of space to relax. So as you're here on the ground, feel your spine relax. Feel your belly soften. And then take in some big, deep breaths. Those breaths, and especially a longer exhalation, those breaths will help your hip flexors because it's all connected. So taking a couple more big, deep breaths here, breathing in deeply through your nose if you can. Exhale deeply either through your nose or your mouth, but see if you can make that exhalation a little bit longer than the inhale. Good. And doing this later, so this class is just gonna be a little bit of a move and learn class, but I recommend doing this position quite often. If your hips feel tight, instead of just jumping into a stretch, take a few extra moments to lie on your back like this and breathe. And that can help and go a long way for your stress levels, your nervous system. But now let's add a little bit of movement. Let's bring our feet a little bit wider apart and then you're going to let the knees drop towards each other and then open the knees apart. But how you wanna have your feet here is that your heels are gonna be on the ground and the toes are gonna to be off the floor. So your, most of your foot's on the, off the floor and it's just your heel. And then you're pivoting on the heel. So as the knees come together and the knees move apart, you're rotating, pivoting over the heels. And this is just a lovely a little bit of internal external movement of the hip joints moving out of what i was saying was which was that flexion and extension or that sagittal plane and the first layer of this is just to do it simply relaxed just get a little bit of a relaxed movement in and out open and closed if you're familiar with butterfly pose in yoga this is sort of a variation of butterfly. You can think about it as a butterfly flapping its wings. And do that a few more times. And what this is going to do is signal to your nervous system to start to release that perception of tension in the hip joints in and around your hip flexors. This nice slow movement will just Again, signal to your nervous system, okay, well, I don't have to hold on to all that tension here. As you're doing this, also notice your jaw because it's all connected. When we start to release a sense of tension in the hip joint flexors, sometimes our jaw or our forehead also is working more than it needs to, so soften your jaw. Lovely, now bring your feet back onto the floor. Feet knees about pelvis width apart. 
And then notice, notice the sensation in your hip flexors now. So just that very simple internal external movement. How did that feel? We didn't even do it for all that long, but did, does it feel a little bit lighter, a little bit more ease around the hip flexors? Take another big deep breath in. Big deep breath out. Let's do another deep breath in. Big deep breath out. Good. Now we're gonna roll over onto the side and we're gonna do another similar movement here. So now that you're on your side, what you can do is just prop up your head with your hand like I'm doing, or you can let your head rest onto your arm, or you can also, if you have a block or some pillows nearby, you can prop your head up that way. And then bring your knees bent and you wanna make sure that your pelvis, both sides of your pelvis are stacked on top of each other. So take a look, is your front top knee moving too forward, moving too back? You wanna have the pelvis stacked and your knees will tell you if, you're, if they're stacked or not. And then here, take one hand onto the, the top outer pelvis here and your hand's going to act like a little safety belt. And your, that hand is gonna remind your pelvis to stay still. And then you're going to lift that top leg up and then down and then open and then close. So first, we're just going to lift the leg up and down. You're not going to worry about anything more specific than that. And I'm going to really get you to start thinking about keeping the pelvis still. You might notice that when the leg comes up, the pelvis might want to go back. You want to keep your pelvis stacked and just lift and lower a few times. Okay, now relax that. You might have noticed that, wait a second, now all of a sudden some good work was happening outside in your legs, which is good, this is some strengthening. But now keep your hand as your safety belt, and then you're going to open the knee, or actually let's bring the leg up at about pelvis height, so your knees are apart. You don't need to bring your leg higher than your pelvis, you wanna to try to keep that all level, hand onto your pelvis, and then you're going to internally and externally rotate the leg. So what that means is that you'll notice that your foot comes up as you internally rotate, the foot comes down as you externally rotate. But the foot ideally is just following along what the femur bone, your thigh bone is doing. You're rotating your thigh out, foot comes down. Rotating your thigh down, foot comes up. <laughs> so think about this deep into your hip joints, internal and external rotation. Nice and slow. You won't necessarily feel this as a stretch. You're probably gonna feel this on the outer hip, which is great. That outer hip muscle, those muscles will help support the health of your hip joints. And then release. Now, if you really did feel that, those outer hips working, just give a little, <laughs> little rub, release some love, good. Okay, we're gonna do one more variation on that. So now, keeping your hand onto your pelvis, you're gonna open the knee up out to the side, and then you're going to internally and externally rotate from there. So now the knee's pointing up towards the ceiling. Hopefully your pelvis did not fall backwards. Hopefully your pelvis stays up and down, stacked on top of each other, and you're going to rotate here with the knee up, it's going to look more side to side, but it's internal and external rotation. Woo -hoo. A lot more work, a lot more effort around the muscles, but there are the muscles around your hip joints, but this is what's great about it. And then release. Woo. Good. Take a moment. And we get to do it to the other side. So roll over to the other side. And let's begin. Stack your hips. And then lift and lower just to get that movement. So get a sense of moving your leg without moving your pelvis. Doing that a few times. Good, now lower the leg. Keep your pelvis stacked. Remember your hand is your little safety belt. And then you're going to open the knee or lift the leg just about pelvis height, give or take. And then you're going to internally and externally rotate. So again, your foot goes up, your foot goes down, but the movement is initiated from deep within your hip joint. Slow and steady.
again, this is working all of those beautiful little rotator muscles that surround your hip joint. I like to think of those muscles like they're, they're little huggers. <laughs> they're giving, they give your hip joints a hug. And this action is a hug. It may not feel as cozy and wonderful as a hug <laughs> actually feels, right? You're feeling those muscles work. But that work is the hug for your hip joints. Okay, beautiful, nice. Relax your leg, take a breath. <sighs> and then let's bring the leg up. So now the knees are moving into that butterfly position, butter, open butterfly. Your pelvis is still stacked. You don't wanna lean it too far back. You might be tempted to do that. Don't fall into temptation and we're going to internally and externally rotate. So your knee stays up, pointing up towards the ceiling. Try to keep it as if it was fixed, as if there was, as if there was a little light flashlight pointing straight to the ceiling. In a fixed position, you rotate in, rotate out. Just in the same internal and external rotation movement, just at another angle. So strengthening even more around your beautiful hip joints. Good. Okay, release, oh, relax out of that. Take a moment. Beautiful. Now let's go onto our backs one more time to, to go back to that first position because what we just did was activate into the hip joints and now let's give a little bit of that nervous system release feeling. So let's go back to the original movement. Heels on the ground, toes the rest of your foot off, pivoting over your heels as the knees come together knees move apart. Do that a few times and this time you're going to have a little bit more activation here. So how to activate a little bit more here, you're going to press your heels into the floor as if you're going to drag them towards your body without actually dragging them anywhere. But that drag feeling is what's going to kick on the muscles around your hip joints a little bit more. Breathing deep. Beautiful, release, bring your feet back to the floor, knees about pelvis width apart, take another big deep breath and observe. How do my hip joints feel? How do they, what's changed after activating them? One more big deep breath. Wonderful. Now let's roll over to one side and then come up to sitting and we're gonna complete our last movements here. So now doing kind of the same things, but different. We're still gonna work on the internal and external rotation because that's that different movement that your hip joints aren't maybe getting, but what they need. So now the next variation of this, we're gonna do two more variations and then we are gonna be done. So sitting up and you can use your hands here for extra support. We're gonna do the exact same thing that we did lying down, but it's a little bit different now when we're sitting upright. So knees apart, knees together and keeping the heels on the ground, toes up to the ceiling. And now you have some choices here, my friends. So if you feel like you can do it with the hands off the floor, go ahead and do that. If you feel like it's more happy in your body to have that support of the hands, absolutely choose that. Choose your own adventure. Good, a few more times, but let's add that drag. So you're pressing the heels down, you're feeling your heels coming in towards your body without actually moving them so you can get a little bit more things kicked on in the hip flexors. Wonderful, and then release them, give them a little shake and a little rub. Good, so our last movement here is the 90-90 legs, but I like to call it 90-90-ish legs because not everybody can comfortably get into a 90 degree angle in their knees in this position. Also, you're more than welcome, if this isn't comfortable for your knees, you can skip this one, do what we just did and trust that you actually have gotten lots of benefits and do these movements often 
Uh, but alternatively is you can also try sitting up onto a block or into some pillows underneath this hip and that might feel better too. So don't be shy to sit up onto something. Okay, so now that we're all set up nicely, let's do our movements. We're just gonna add a couple of little fun ones. Let's, I like to bring some movement first. Outer or inner foot presses down, shin bone presses down on your back leg, knee presses down. Keep the, all of those parts connected. And then you're going to rotate, add a little twist, reach your arm, and then come back. You wanna keep knee, shin bone, foot down, reach, rotate, arm up, yeah. Because yes, hip flexors, but it's all connected. So reach, get a nice little arm movement and rotate. This is one of my all-time favorite movements actually, because it's not just great in our hip, it's also so good for some rotation in your upper back, your chest, the shoulders, all the other places in our bodies that can feel tight. Okay, let's do one more. Big reach, good. So you've got that nice little stretchy feeling here. Now you're going to face the front leg. You're going to keep your foot down. Oh, and we're gonna to start to lift the back knee off the ground. Again, I like to have my hand as a little safety belt. Pelvis, stay where you are. Knee lift and lower, lift, lower. It does not matter for a moment how high your knee comes off the floor. Your toes can come off the floor with the foot if, that, if you'd like but don't let your pelvis pull backwards. Good, that active work again. Oh, it's great. And you might be wondering, well, why, how is this helping my hip flexors? Like I'm creating more tension. You are, but you're not. <laughs> so trust me on this one. It's actually over time what is good for your hip flexors and will reduce the tension. Now, relax that. Let's go one more little rotation. Oh yeah. Nice, and then let's go to our other leg. Huh. But I like to do the little in-between, and like a little before and after, so let's do a little, again, move. We did a really big activation, so now let's move the legs. And so this one, I actually like to lean back a little bit, just enough so that I can get a good little, as I roll over my pelvis or I roll over my hips, I get a nice extra stretch here. Okay, now you're gonna bring your knees over to the other side, other leg in front, other leg behind. Have your knees in a 90 degree angle that works for you as best you can. Uh, press the inner foot, your shin, and your knee down, back leg. All right, and then we're gonna rotate forward. As you rotate forward, keep pressing that down so that we wanna get that stretchy feeling along the front of the thigh. Good, reach your arm and then back and then do that nice little upper body rotation throw in some multitasking while we're here because tension in the hips can be connected to tension in our shoulders and our back good let's do one more big one you can all i highly recommend if you you even just did this, this is such a nice little stretch, but let's go a little bit more into the movement. So again, pressing down through your foot, hand onto your pelvis like a little safety belt, and then rotate the knee up and open. And you find, might find right away that one side moves a lot easier than the other, or a little bit more easy, or hard, depends. And that's okay. Good. You'll get the most benefits out of this by not letting your pelvis move back. So if I did this and let my hips, like all of a sudden my leg looks like it's coming off the floor and wow, amazing, but <laughs> it's my pelvis that's helping to bring my leg. So we want to drive the movement into our hip joint. So keep your pelvis as it is. Oh. So when I'm not moving my pelvis and just my hip joint, then the movement gets smaller, but it gets better. Because again, when you're pulling all those little muscles around the hip joints that we've been talking about this class, they're kicking on, they're saying hello, and they're working more, more functionally for the long-term health of your hip joints. 
Let's do one more. Ha <sighs> <sighs> nice. Release out of that. Bring your legs out in front of you. Beautiful. Let's do this little, our, our first internal and external rotation. In fact, you can also lie back down and do that if that was delightful for you and you loved it. Otherwise, we'll do this version. Beautiful. Okay. Give a little bit of extra love. <sighs> now, will that immediately make your legs and hips feel brand new? Maybe, maybe not. But my friends, let me, I hope you can trust that doing different movements, don't just lunge away your hip pain, <laughs> as good as lunges are and as good as they can feel. Adding in rotation around the hip joints, both passive ones, those more gentle versions, and then more active ones are really going to be the long-term solution for your tight hips, truly. So save this video, do it often, and you will feel a difference over time. But the key is do it more often. Do any of these movements through this video more often, okay? So if you've got questions, leave them in the comments and I will answer them. Save, like, share, subscribe, do again, all those things here at Heart and Bones Yoga. And thanks for being here. I hope it helps.